Well, we're pleased to have the Secretary of Agriculture join us here on our January 1st edition of This Week in Agribusiness, starting off a new year. Secretary Tom Filsack, thank you for your availability, and uh, we appreciate you sharing a little bit of insight with us here. The thing that comes to mind is just how crowded that radar screen is for many of our folks out on farms and ranches right now. There are a lot of concerns, and logistics, it seems, relate to, to many of those. Oh, that's true, Max. And, and I think we have to look at the supply chain challenge that uh, farmers face and understand that there are some things we can control and some things we can't. Obviously, this supply chain uh, situation is a result of strong demand, which is obviously a good thing. So what we're trying to focus on at USDA is trying to figure out how we can help on the revenue side, how we can maintain income for farmers, increase income, expand income, so they have the capacity to deal with some of the challenges that they currently face with high price uh, of inputs. Uh, looking at, at continuing a record year in exports. We had a record year in 2021. We expect a record year of exports in 2022. Continuing to figure out ways in which we can create more new and better markets with additional processing capacity. You're gonna see a lot of that activity in 2022. Uh, support, continue support for, uh, for the industry as we did in 2021. You're gonna see a lot of interesting uh, opportunities for us to provide additional resources. So. Uh, at the end of the day, we're, we're really f focused on, on markets and on revenue. Uh, and then hopefully uh, the supply chain will unclog itself over time. We'll get back into a more stable circumstance and farmers will see some of those input costs coming down. It sure is a huge concern for the season ahead, not just the cost of the inputs, as you know, Mr. Secretary, but the availability of them. Is there anything that you or the White House can do to work with the Chinese since we, we've become so dependent upon them for the inputs for our crops, it seems? Well, I, I think what we can do is to try to focus on uh, on freeing up some of the uh, of the uh, situation in the ports. You see the extended hours in the ports. You see that we are making a request uh, for the Oakland port to basically be more open to agricultural products and be able to uh, move products in and, and through that uh, port more effectively. We're looking at ways in which we can increase truck drivers to get uh, uh, resources that may be sitting on a dock uh, back into the economy. So there are things we can do. You know, we continually talk uh, to to uh, to the Chinese, but the reality is that they are essentially not exporting because they are using it for their own farmers, and it's pretty difficult, obviously, for them. So we're constantly looking for creative ways to work, if you will, work around uh, the situation that we confront. Could these input problems, though, ultimately affect the yield of our crops going into this 2022 season? And is that a concern of anybody at USDA? Well, obviously, we're always concerned about yields. We're concerned about price. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, we are also concerned about Mother Nature. Uh, we've obviously seen a significant number of, of disasters occur in 2021 that impact and affect yields, whether it's a drought or whether it's horrific storms or uh, a tornado that nobody could anticipate occurring in a winter storm in December. Uh, so obviously, we're concerned about that. That's one of the reasons why we uh, continue to look for ways to provide risk management. Uh, for producers. We look for uh, an opportunity to utilize some of the programs that Congress has put together to provide additional relief. The WIP Plus program, where Congress has associated an additional $10 billion for losses in 2021. Uh, we obviously will continue to look for ways in which we can uh, supplement and amplify uh, the, the risk management tools and the support tools that we have. And at the end of the day, you know, we've got the, the Farm Bill programs that also provide help and assistance. So a broad range of opportunities uh, and at the same time, looking for ways in which we can expand markets. I'm really excited about the Climate Smart Agriculture uh, Ag Ag and Forestry Partnership Initiative. That's going to create opportunities, Max, for farmers to be paid uh, to embrace climate smart agriculture practices, which over time could help increase productivity uh, and enhance soil health and, and improve water quality. So all of that, I think, is uh, it looks to me as a, as a really exciting and uh, opportunistic year for 2022. On these supply chain issues, we know that the trucking industry is a big part of what we do in agriculture. Uh, that is a, also a, a key piece of this puzzle, is it not? And uh, that shortage of drivers is not going to be easily overcome, is it? Uh, well, again, we're, we're making an effort. We're also looking at ways at, U, at USDA to use some of the resources we have to maybe incent or encourage folks who may have left that job to come back for at least for a period of time to, to move agricultural products. So I think there are a variety of ways in which we can make a difference uh, over the long term. 
Looking at biofuels, farmers are always concerned about where the biofuels, the renewable fuels policy is going to go, where it is, what will happen to it. How optimistic are you about the future of biofuels for agriculture, especially when you hear about things like the airline industry is starting to, to use biofuels? Well, I'm very optimistic about this. I was at, uh, in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio at the GE uh, aviation plant where they make jet engines, and they are basically banking uh, their the future jet engine on the ability to have a sustainable aviation fuel that is uh, bio-based. Uh, I think this is a potential 35, 36 billion gallon market. Uh, I think there is a significant amount of uh, interest in the Department of Energy and Department of Transportation and USDA working collaboratively to help uh, develop this industry. At the same time, I think we're, uh, we see a growth pattern for uh, the renewable fuel standard as well for cars and trucks. So we see a, a very solid number for 2022. Uh, we obviously have provided additional resources and help for the biofuel industry. Uh, and we're looking for ways in which we can expand access to higher blends. That's uh, the reason we announced a $100 million infrastructure a fund that helps to, to fund uh, these distribution systems, these pumping systems that will allow E15 and higher blends to be more readily available. So I think that the, uh, the arrow is uh, pointing up in terms of the biofuel industry for 2022. Secretary Vilsack, Happy New Year to you, and thank you for spending time with us. Likewise, Mac.